Hey, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach, and today I'm going to be making a set of holdfasts, the likes of which I'll bet you've never seen. Stick around. First things first, let me quote Mark Twain and just let you know that the rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. Yes, I have been pretty doggone absent the last, gosh, I guess it's been the last three weeks or so. Uh, if you're watching this video, thanks for sticking around, checking back in on me. Um, I, man, I've got so much stuff going on in my life right now. It's crazy. I don't even know what to do with it. I got stuff so much on my plate. It's rolling off of one plate and on to the next and then on to the floor. Uh, some career change, life change kind of stuff going on. And uh, another, another thing that's been taking up a lot of my time and, well, kind of emotional energy is something. Uh, I'm not going to tell you about it just yet, but it, uh, it stands a pretty good chance of adding some kind of interesting content to the channel if it comes to fruition, but I'm working on it. So now back to the subject at hand. After the last workbench video, somebody asked me, was I going to make some holdfasts? Yes, I am going to make some holdfasts, but you know me, being a bit of a non-conventional thinker, I had a different idea than the common hand-forged holdfasts that you see on everybody else's workbench. Um, and in the process of Google searching this, just to see if it was as oddball as I thought it was, I came across something even more odd, and I'm going to go for it. What I found was called barrelettes, and I'm going to make some. Okay, first things first. When hunting for your barrelette material, fixins, if you will, you want to try to find crotch parts of the tree. Rather than having a branch coming off to one side, you want to try to find where it splits pretty evenly. Here's a good one, here's a decent one here, and here's one down here. This one's actually probably the best one, but the diameter is a little bit small. So let me get these pieces removed, and then we can really get to work. All right now, I only found one reference to these online, so there's not a whole heck of a lot of uh, instruction. So I'm kind of going to be winging it a little bit here, but I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what's going on. All right, this is a live tree. Well, it's part of a live tree. I think that that is going to be a benefit to this process because it will add a bit of springiness. I think um, I think if you had something hardwood, old and dried, uh, you know, well well seasoned hardwood that was a crotch like this, I think that would also work. Probably that would work really, really well, um, but I don't have anything like that kicking around. So I'm going to use this. I don't even know what kind of tree this is. This tree is a little bit perplexing to me. It has these buds on it, kind of like a tamarack almost. It has needles, short needles, but it's just, I don't know, just a weird tree. So it's a, it's a conifer of some sort, and hopefully it'll work. Now, I'm trying to make the best of this and I'm trying to be able to use several of these here at the same time not the same time but you know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about halfway between this and this and I'm going to cut that there how about this I'm going to get rid of some of this excess this is getting irritating Now we're cooking with Crisco. Now let's just see here. What I want to do is I want to have that. I want to have it. I want to have the cut on here a little bit steeper than 90 degrees. I want it to have a little bit of extra so that if it springs a little bit, it has a little bit of extra force on there. So I'm going to mark this here and then just cut it a little sharper than that. All right, there's the first one. What do you think, is it gonna work? While we're here, We'll go ahead and cut. Uh, 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 uh. Let me 
use this as the vertical. Numero dos. Now, this one, I don't know. I don't know how much faith I have in this one. This is even going to work. We're going to cut this guy. There we go. What do you think? Are they going to work? I think we need to clean them up just a little bit. Eh? Yeah. While I'm sitting here thinking about how much to clean these guys up, oh man, I was thinking about hitting them with a draw knife and just taking the bark off of them. I'm welcoming your inputs on this. I'm a little afraid if I take the bark all the way off of them, since it's kind of wet wood, it's going to get slippery and kind of defeat the purpose. I don't know. Certainly, be the best way to have the wood is barkless. Yeah, we'll give it a shot here and uh, just check it out as a tester. Well, shoot. There I go, taking the bark off, even if I didn't want to. Man, if this isn't the most hillbilly thing you ever saw, huh? Oh man, we got sap all over the place here. Maybe super, super green wood <laughs> might not be the best way to do it. Oh well, Sally Forth here. All right, got all the bumps off of it. It's gonna fit. Oh, it is gonna fit. Oh, what do you think about this? I don't know, man. I got a good feeling about this. <laughs> Let's find something to hold down, shall we? All right, confess that I feel like I'm not the best equipped to try this, because, well, I've never used real hold fast let alone hillbilly hold fast. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure the best way to position them or use them. But, huh? let's see if she'll hold. Okay. <laughs> Can we plane on it? Oh! hit a knot and it let go. Try it again. Alright. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I've got my plane set a little deep here. I think the biggest problem is this. Oh, there you go. The fact that I've still got bark on this. Let me strip this bark off. And uh, we're going to try it again. Okay, I've got the bark stripped off of them. And I'm a little bit afeard that now with the bark strip off of them, they're kind of narrow. Uh, I didn't realize how much room that bark was taking up. But nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot here and see what we can get done if anything and i did turn around my board so that i'd be planing you know with the grain rather than against the grain that was not doing me any favors all right 
Let's see here. All right, that one's held. Okay. Oh no. Whoa. That's not what I was hoping for. Let's try it again. What the? Oh no! I broke it. Yeah. Doggone it. All right. Well. Hmm. I guess it's going to be back to the drawing board. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this is a bad type of wood to use. Um, but check this out, though. There are some merits in this. This is, I mean, if you can get it positioned right, I think that this can work. Uh, I think that it needs to be a little bit closer to the diameter of your dog holes, and it needs to be not wet. So although my, my go at it has somewhat failed here, I'd be willing to bet that there's one or two of you out there uh, that might be willing to pursue this a little bit further. I'm going to do the same thing here at home. I'm going to, I think I already said it, I'm going to go find some different wood and, uh, and continue trying it. But give it a try. Now you know something that you didn't know before. Now you know what kind of doesn't work. Uh, yeah, that didn't work. Um, yeah, and that's about all I've got. I'm a little, sorry, I'm a little dejected. I was really hoping that this was going to work spectacularly, but it did. I wouldn't call it spectacularly. That's what I've got for you today. Sorry I'm going to leave you on a failure note, but, um, you know, that thing about Edison and 2,000 different ways to not invent a light bulb. Eh. Thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate your time. I hope to see you again before three weeks from now. And, uh, yeah, take care. See you next time.